Hey everyone, it's Rosin, I'm finally back with another episode of Back Alley Knife Fights. If you followed the series, you may have noticed that it's been gone for a little bit, and there's a good reason for that. I haven't really been playing fighting games. This is due to a variety of reasons. Uh, you may remember me talking about attending Combo Breaker 2020 in the last couple of videos, and obviously that didn't end up happening due to COVID, the tournament was cancelled. Uh, so that clearly was one thing that, you know, would take the wind out of my sails, but uh, I can't lie, there's a lot of other reasons too. Uh, for one thing, uh, this is honestly probably the most major aspect of it. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Extreme vs. Maxi Bustan ended up stealing all my attention this summer in terms of my competitive multiplayer gaming fix. Uh, I love this game to death. Uh, I've put way, 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 way too much time into it. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm over a couple hundred at this point, uh, in hour count wise. Um, yeah, it's a fun 3D arena fighter that's uh, pretty similar to Virtua On, if you've ever played that. Uh, obviously, it's based on Gundam. I have a separate series running right now called New Type Net Play, where I talk over some of my favorite matches, and I'm going to start uploading those again. I have two episodes out right now, uh, but I want to get back to it. I have a lot of footage recorded to uh, talk over, so check that out if you're at all interested. But beyond that, it also just feels like a lot of the friends I have who played fighting games ended up taking a break or not playing as much as they used to during the summer. Uh, that ended up impacting my drive to play as well. Uh, I put a fair amount of time into learning fighting games late last year and early into this year even, uh, and I, what I think a large part of that has to do with was that I had access to a wide variety of people. I could just reach out to a large amount of different people of varying skill levels and practice with them, learn stuff with them, and that diversity of skill really spiced things up and it made it really fun to play and, and learn these games. Um, you know, it felt like I truly started to kind of understand why that community aspect of these games are, you know, that, that com communal aspect is so beloved, obviously, you know, in tournaments and stuff, and I was always already aware of that, but just kind of getting to experience that firsthand with other people who were at my skill level, a little bit below my skill level, and a lot of people who are way above my skill level, um, being able to play the same games with them and have lobbies and talk about stuff and share resources and really, you know, kind of help each other out and see where we're at and kind of monitor each other's growth and stuff like that uh, was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, that didn't end up lasting. Um, I personally don't have a local scene and I just play these games online. I always have. Uh, COVID-19 hasn't really affected how I play fighting games personally, but plenty of my friends uh, who do, you know, participate in local scenes and stuff like that did decide to take a step back uh, from the genre, it feels like, uh, once it became clear that netplay was becoming the only way to play these games instead of, you know, one of several options. Uh, once it became clear that local multiplayer was a no-go, I think a lot of people decided, you know, it'd be time to take a break for a little bit until these, you know, things understandably died down and we can you know, play in person again safely, but um, it also really doesn't help, this is kind of the elephant in the room I know, that uh, this summer saw a massive wave of revelations regarding abuse and harassment throughout the entire fighting game scene, uh, from players and tournament organizers to streamers and even some developers, unfortunately. Uh, it became pretty obvious that there was a massive cultural problem within the fighting game community, and it's going to be a long road to make sure everyone is safe moving forward and I'm sure at every single, you know, every level I think everyone kind of has a role to play in making sure that, uh, and you know, this goes beyond fighting games, you know, um, whatever communities you belong to or uh, whatever um, little groups that you reside in, I think, you know, everyone has a role to play in make, making sure that everyone's safe and that um, people who are experiencing horrible things have safe outlets to uh, go to and um, kind of call out and speak up and say that injustice is happening. Um, so, you know, gotta work towards that process of making things safer for everyone. Um, I don't really know if I'd call myself a member of the fighting game community proper. I've always kind of, I don't know, I've kind of noodled that in my brain a bit. Uh, even though I try to get better at these games and I obviously play them a, a fair bit, uh, probably more than the average video game player. Um, and, you know, I, I do research and practice and stuff and try to improve. Uh, I don't know if I truly put in the amount of time, effort, or participation in the community to, to really say I belong to it, if that makes sense. Um, even then, the constant stream of stories coming out regarding misconduct and abuse made it really hard to want to engage with the scene. And um, even for someone like me, who I, I kind of feel a distant, you know, a distance between myself and the, the heart of the scene, um, 
I don't know, it just kind of made it hard for me to want to engage with the scene in general just because it uh it just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth so you know that kind of killed my motivation a bit too so it's a shame but uh that being said i i think i'm ready to jump back in now and play again um i've been wanting to play fighting games for a bit now i'm starting to feel that itch a little again uh not gonna lie max Agustan still probably going to be my main focus right now just because i really fucking love that game uh, it's a growing scene and i kind of want to be part of that community um and see it grow and kind of uh, take off in the West more than it already has. I feel like it's, uh, you know, words, words getting out about uh, M-Bon. And uh, people are kind of starting to realize, oh shit, there's there's a lot of cool stuff there. And I, I want to do what I can to uh, participate in that and enjoy it for as long as it's, uh, you know, active scene. So, um, but yeah, uh, in terms of fighting game stuff, actually earlier this year I was invited to a LGBTQ friendly fighting game discord called Trans Fights. Uh, the admin invited me. Her name's Tia. She's great. Uh, I joined and I actually ended up having a lot of fun throughout uh, 2020 playing Undernight and Melty Blood with some of the regulars there. Uh, it's a really warm and friendly community and it's just really nice to have, kind of like I said before, a nice variety of players of different skill levels to play with. Um, they have fight nights on weekends where, you know, everyone net plays a random game and um, there are different roles that you can join for different games depending on what you play. So when someone pings to look for matches, you can get a Discord notification that, you know, hey, someone wants to play Undernight, and you can go in and play if you want to and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. A lot of fun lobbies and hijinks there. It, it's just a great time. Um, if you're at all interested, there's an invite code in the description. Of course, if you join, make sure to take a look at the rules before posting, but, you know, you should be doing that for any Discord you join anyways, uh, you know. Just always look at the rules, it's the polite thing to do. Um, but yeah, the following Melty Blood matches you are about to see are actually from the server. I had a really, really fun uh, long series of matches with a regular there named uh, Idia, and I gotta say, looking back through this footage, I think this might be my favorite session of fighting game playing I've ever experienced. So Idia, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Uh, she's great, and uh, it was just really fun, you know goofing around and we had some really close matches and some fun back and forth uh, momentum going on through this entire session it was it was just really a blast it was a great time uh and yeah just melty blood is a phenomenal game i know it's a a, a joke and many people know ha you play is the one you play in the bathroom or you play in wacky locations all that but you know whatever fuck that melty blood is a genuinely phenomenal really fun game to play uh and one of my highlights of 2020 has honestly been uh, being able to play with so many different people and just having fun and it's just a great time. I, it always puts a smile on my face, even when I'm getting utterly demolished. Uh, I'm not that great at it still, obviously, but uh, it's just been a, a great, great way to spend uh, some parts of the year. I need to play it more. I, I, I haven't played Multi-Blood in a while. I need to get back to it and start asking people for games again. Um, but yeah, enough of the preamble. Uh, let's go ahead and watch these matches. Okay. Uh, I actually have a lot I want to discuss this video, and hopefully I have enough time. But, you know, we, we have quite a few matches to get through here, so I, I think I'll be good. But uh, I want to start up by saying that I feel like my experience with Melty Blood has actually been indicative of my personal journey with fighting games uh, in general so far, in terms of how I get into these games, uh, how I learn these games, and even where I, where I kind of stop learning these games and where I get stuck and I'm not entirely sure where to go next or what to do to improve. Um, which, honestly, first step to that problem is, uh, play more. Uh, obviously I haven't been playing, so I need to get back into the swing of things. I'm sure I'm rusty as hell, I need to get back into, uh, playing this game again, and, uh, you know, try to, uh, rebuild that muscle memory, too. Um, especially because the character I play, the, uh, B&B, &B, is a little, a little tight on timing, at least for one, uh, specific, uh, link you have to make. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, um, I started playing Melty Blood because uh, some friends of mine had downloaded the Community Edition and they invited me to take along and play. And uh, just for those of you wondering, the Community Edition is actually a fan-made, unofficial version of the game that's available free to download. It's technically a pirated copy of the game that's been modded so that it has rollback netcode and hell yeah, Mystic Eyes of Death Perception. Mm, love it. Um, <laughs> as I was saying, uh, the Community Edition is a version of the game made by fans that has rollback netcode. It has the best uh, online play of any version of Melty Blood that's available. 
Uh, what a lot of people in the community will tell you is, hey, if you uh, if you want to play, just uh, buy the game on Steam and then don't even play that version just because the online's bad. Uh, just download the community edition. That way, uh, you don't have to feel bad about pirating it, and uh, you know French Bread gets the money for their hard work on this wonderful game, but you still get to play the community edition. So. Um, yeah, uh, look into downloading that if you want to get into Melty Blood, it's a great time, but, uh, you know, I, I really didn't know what I was doing at first. I had played Melty Blood before I had it on Steam, uh, I'd, I'd played it a few times with friends and we just kind of dicked around and, uh, I, I just like the feel of French bread games in general, so I, I just really enjoyed, uh, the time I had with it at that very base casual level. So going into it, I'm like, hell yeah, Melty Blood. Uh, and then I got my ass demolished because it was very clear everyone I was playing with clearly understood the systems and mechanics a lot more than I did. Um, I played, I remember I played a 22 game series with Mark uh, that first week or so I was learning this game. And we we played 22 games, and I, I think I only won twice, and I want to say that at least one of those games, I'm pretty sure, was a fluke. Like, I, I felt like I didn't really deserve the win. Um, so I went to learning how to play this game. I, I did my research. I picked a character. Uh, I'm playing Ryogi Shiki. Those of you who uh, have followed me for a bit may know that I have some affection for Kara no Kyokai, also known as the Garden of Sinners. Um, and that's its official English title, it seems like they settled on. Um, but yeah, it's my favorite work within the broader Nasuverse type moon, uh, family, I guess. Uh, I just really love that story, and I, I love Ryogi Shiki, she's just a wonderful character, and she's just so fucking cool. So obviously I had to play Ryogi. Um, I picked, uh, there are three, there are three different styles each character has. Uh, if you're familiar with, uh, Capcom vs. SNK, you can kind of think of them as the different grooves you can select for your characters in that game. There's a, cre uh, a crescent moon style, a half moon style, and a full moon style. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of forgetting the details, uh, they're, they're kind of escaping me in the moment, just because it's been a while since I've played for, uh, crescent and half moon, and, uh, the characters I play in this game, uh, Ryogi included, and also I played Red Arcade a, a little bit. I was I was starting to play around with when I uh, kind of got out of the game for a bit and uh, took a break. Uh, I, I play both of them in the Full Moon style, which uh, is is kind of more of a traditional fighting game um, style. Uh, you have uh, every character has an A B C uh, or like light medium heavy attack, and then a D button which acts as a shield and kind of serves a you know multiple uh, different functions. But yeah, your chosen style will have an impact on uh, how you uh, just various uh, mechanics that you have available to you in terms of the shielding, also how your meter works, how your uh, um, super works, and, and stuff like that. Just uh, it, it kind of plays around with uh, all those different elements. So. Yeah, um, one of the, the big things for um, Full Moon, though, is that your normals are pretty pretty powerful and uh, tend to be a little bit better, I believe, from, from what I've researched, at least, from the uh, Crescent and uh, Half Moon counterparts. But the drawback is that you can only you can only do the traditional fighting game, like A to B to C type uh, combo structure, whereas the other two styles have uh, something that French bread games are uh, kind of known for, is the uh, reverse beats, where... Uh, it's a bit more freeform, and, and you have a lot more combo ability between moves. You can kind of go backwards in that chain, so as long as you don't repeat a move twice in, a, in the same combo chain, you can kind of go from a C move to a B move to an A move, and you just have a lot more flexibility and freedom. But uh, I'm, I'm, too, um, uh, I'm, I'm too babby to learn all the intricacies of that right now. And uh, I'm just sticking with Full Moon characters. I've seen some people say that Full Moon uh, Ryogi is kind of a brain dead character and you're not really going to have a lot of fun if you uh, play as her because the things are just so simple. But I don't know. I think that person needs to uh, speak for themselves because um, I've been having a lot of fun with Full Moon Ryogi. Uh, I think she's just a blast to play. Uh, yeah, she is. She has a fairly simple move set, but. Uh, you know, I still have a lot to learn, and just learning the game of Melty Blood itself using uh, Ryogi as, as kind of a conduit as as my way into that grander system has been a lot of fun. Um, she, ha she has some glaring weaknesses. Um, I know one thing, at least for the Full Moon variant, I'm not sure if this is true for the other ones too, is um, you start to notice that uh, the lack of reversals in her toolset is a 
a major problem, uh, especially if, if you're me and you're just terrible at blocking and defense in general in fighting games. Uh, I can't block worth shit. That's something I really, really need to get better at. I'm pretty sure I've referenced that in the series before, too. Um, yeah, what, once Ryogi gets stuck in a corner uh, and someone's putting pressure on her, it's really hard for her to get out. Um, other characters in this game have really fast uh, normals, that like A normals, that they can uh, kind of shove out and repeat and, and play with the uh, kind of play with by uh, delaying when they mash out those normals, and Ryogi only has one of them, and it's not that great. Uh, thankfully, her other normals do have quite a bit of range, and her air normals are actually pretty solid, uh, which is important in this game. But um, she also, I, I don't know, I, I, I feel like I remember reading this, and also I, I feel like it's true to my experience as well. When she's on the ground, and if someone's coming in at her from the air, I feel like she kind of struggles... Uh, you know, punishing that or or doing anything about that other than just blocking high. So, yeah, it's it can be a little tricky, but um, yeah, she's been a lot of fun. And uh, you might see there, she has a knife that she can throw, and then you have to pick it back up, kind of like uh, you know, Cody from uh, Street Fighter. So that's a lot of fun. And of course, you you got your uh, arc drive, which is the the fun little um, mystic eyes of uh, death perception, which. Act a little bit like a Shun Goku Satsu, like a Akuma or Evil Ryu use. Uh, just really, really fun to actually hit that when it lands. It's a little tricky to land. You kind of need to punish someone if you want to land it reliably. Uh, I like to be a little gung ho and try to catch people pressing buttons and trapping themselves in it when I uh, when I use it. But usually that just ends up with uh, them jumping out of the way and then bullying me after <laughs> I uh, inevitably miss. Uh, you saw me going for a kind of flashy combo there, uh, and I ended up doing something that I often do while playing this character, uh, and that is I inputted this super, but I, I accidentally mashed out too many quarter circles, and the game read it instead as a dragon punch input. Uh, Ryogi has two sets of counters. One is uh, forward dragon punch motion, and one is uh, op reverse dragon punch mo motion. And... Uh, she kind of crosses her arms and will then uh, throw the opponent uh, to like kind of in, like a counter um, if they uh, hit Ryogi with a normal. And th there's a there's a few times where I try to go for a Rekka, which she also she also has a, a Rekka series too. Um, but yeah, there, there's a few times where I either go for a Rekka or I try to mash out her uh, Rekka super. And <laughs> I just end up getting a counter instead and looking like a clown, and that's what happened there. Uh, I did the input in the air for the knife throw super, and you can follow that up with a slide into a uh, Rekka super, and you can get two supers in one combo. It's not really the most optimal thing in the world, but it looks cool, and I feel good when I land it. So <laughs> I tend to go for it in matches even when I know I shouldn't. Um, but yeah, I... Uh, I wasn't able to get it there. There's a few times later on in this video, I think towards the end, where I do land it, and uh, I felt very happy about that. But yeah, you, you can see, kinda... Th this game is very, um... air combat heavy. As you can see, Idio was air com uh, comboing me there. And, um, that's actually just a, a big part of this game in general, and you have a lot of uh, mobility options. You can obviously air dash, you can double jump, you can super jump, though you can't super jump backwards in this game. That's a, that's a neat little intricacy. So, uh, trying to figure out, uh, how to move around, and see? Like, there we go. I was able to, uh, kind of move beyond that, uh, assist there, and, uh, kind of dash in to get something going. Try to escape the corner. That super is one of, like, two ways I know how to escape the corner, the other just being try to <laughs> dash out, but... Uh, yeah, it's tricky. Ah, I thought I could super out of that, but no. She called my bluff. Violent Scion, uh, as, a uh, Scion ta uh, Tottery. Or, uh, yeah, is it Tottery? Tottery? I I'm not sure how you pronounce that last part. Uh, everyone just, I think, calls her, uh... V Scion, which I think might actually be Vampire Scion now that I'm thinking about it and not uh, Violent Scion, I'm not sure. Uh, someone in the comments probably knows. So, uh, when, when the community says V Scion, do they mean Vampire or Violent? Let me know. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool take on the character. I know, you know, a lot of people come into Melty Blood and they know Scion just because of Eltnum from uh, Undernight, obviously, but uh, I, I, I 
have uh, not played with too many people who play this version of the character, and this version of the character seems really cool, actually. You can just see I ate shit in the corner there. That was an excellent, excellent way to uh, clean house that round. That was cool. Oh yeah, this was fun too. Um, as you can see from the, uh, there's a little bit of a transition there. Obviously, I couldn't include all of our matches, so I, I kind of had to choose ones that I thought were, were going to be interesting to watch. But um, yeah, uh, Idia started playing Arcade, and uh, I could not deal with this Crescent Moon Arcade. Uh, I know that uh, Arcade is, is an interesting character. I know that um, I've seen a lot of people say that one of the things with Sea Arc is that she has some of the harder combos to learn in the cast because she has so much uh, character-specific stuff that she needs to look out for. And I know actually that, um, I, I feel like I've seen somewhere people say that when you practice combos in this game, you should practice on Ryogi because for some reason, some of her hitboxes are a little weird compared to the other cast members, and sometimes there are combos in the game that work on everyone else except for Ryogi for some reason, like she'll just fall out. Um, this game is so weird in, in, in that regard, I know. Um, I, I think actually too that there's there's a few other characters where people say, oh, you should check and make sure this, you know, your combo or bread and butter that you go for uh, actually works on the entire cast. So, just uh, something that I, I feel like um, I haven't experienced a lot of the modern fighting games I play, but, you know, this game's a bit older and has some older sensibilities that uh, it takes some getting used to. But yeah, uh, Idia's arc just demolished me. And, okay, there. I got... I got the Mystic Eye, so I feel good about that, but... Okay, there we go. I did take the round. I took the round, at least. I can feel happy about that. Sometimes that's all you can ask for is, hey, at least I won a round. <laughs> or landed a cool super or did something. You gotta look for the highlights, even if uh, even if you're doing bad, so... But yeah, I, I just could not deal with the mix-up game here and uh, the movement. It was uh, very, very tough. Yeah, just... Oof. I love that air throw too, by the way. That it's, it just looks so cool. Just the like, grab you and just smash you right down into the ground. Arcoid's so cool. I need to get back to Radiant Suki Hime. I actually thought it was kind of whatever um, last time I attempted to read it, but uh, it, it was fun enough. And I'm kind of I'm kind of in that Halloween supernaturally uh, spooky mood for weird anime vampire stuff. So maybe I should. Uh, Reinstall that on my new computer because I, I haven't uh, read Tsukihime since my I had my old laptop and uh, Maybe try giving that a go again since I, I didn't even finish uh, Any route in that uh, VN when I last tried going at it, so it's a long one So yeah, you can see me going for the uh, two things for, for one thing uh, if you uh, you might have seen that weird slash that I did with that kind of cracking effect. Uh, if Ryogi holds down her standing C, she gets an unblockable attack. Uh, they either need to interrupt it or just get the fuck out of the way. It's really, it, it's it's one of uh, the better tools Ryogi has in her tool set, uh, just because of its reach and the fact it's unblockable, even though it, it has uh, a charge time associated with it. Uh, it, it. It can really put pressure on the opponent if they're, uh, you know, worried about it, so... Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, you could see the combo I was going for. Uh, it, it's this thing where you do a, a kind of basic series of uh, normal attacks into the Rekka, and then they pop into the air on the last hit of the Rekka, and then you have to catch them falling back down with a crouching C, and that can actually be really tricky. Uh, the, the timing on it is really tight. Um, I used to be a bit better at it. I remember I, I took... Before I took my long break, I took I had taken a, a little bit of a shorter break, uh, and I had I had noticed like who I wasn't getting it as consistently. I'm sure I'm even worse at it now. I need to go back to practicing that combo. Um, it's it's really the only tricky part of the combo is is getting that hit after the Rekka to pop him back up, and then you do another standing C, and then you can jump up and do some crazy stuff in the air, and uh, you know finish up with a super or an air grab or do whatever you want to do. It's it's cool stuff. I'm stuck in the corner again. This is exactly where I don't want to be, trying to super out of it. I made a little bit of progress and then immediately ate shit again, so... Back into the corner I go. Other corner this time. <laughs> Can I make it? Oh, 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 okay. Couldn't get anything off of that. Knife throw. 
throwing out the knife can be can be really fun, especially when um you, you manage to catch them trying to do something full screen. A lot of times people don't expect it, but not the case this time. And once again, I ate shit. I believe at some point in here there is a match where I win, but I could be wrong. We'll have to see. I might not have won any match against Idia's Arcade, but I, I believe in myself. Maybe I did at least once. We'll, we'll have to look. Please note that she is on an eight-game win streak. <laughs> uh, this uh, Ryogi color is actually one that I used to uh, predominantly go with. I, I like the uh, the simplicity of the uh, kind of white, gray, and black. Uh, it looked really cool, and then also the red and black knife just as, as a little bit of an accent was uh, was something I, I found very uh, cool. But then I actually found this other color she has where she she kind of has like this red and black clothing uh, color palette and then she has uh, blonde hair and red eyes and that actually looks really cool and I ended up switching to that one as my main Ryogi color of choice. I think it's color 18. I don't know why I remember that off the top of my head or why I told you, but <laughs> there's that info. Okay, there we go. I got around. Do I win the second round? Let's look. I skimmed through this footage before talking over it, but I, I uh... It, it's been so long that I don't remember exactly how all these matches go. Do I get the combo? No! Ah, oh, I didn't even get the crouching C. What was I doing? What was I doing? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely need to practice my execution better. Okay, I... Blocking was pretty solid there. Burst out of it. Sometimes you just got a raw super. And actually, that's one thing that's cool. If you land Ryogi's Rekka super uh, raw like that, or at least with without too much stuff happening before it, uh, the enemy will actually kind of stutter like that and then pop up in the air, and you can actually jump after them and uh, continue the combo. It's really awesome. And, oh, pfft, why did I jump? Uh, I, mm, that, that's actually something else I should probably talk about is... um. There have been a few times where I've noticed that uh, my posture could actually be better. Of all things, I never thought I'd be talking about this with fighting games, but I feel like I start to sometimes, uh, like, I, I need to be a little more solid with uh, how I lay my arcade stick on my lap or, or on my, you know, thighs whenever I'm playing on a chair or something like that, because I feel like I, it starts to, to kind of sway or tilt to one side sometimes, and that ends up making me jump or do weird stuff directionally that I'm not meaning to do, and I, I need to suddenly adjust myself and kind of uh, readjust my position. Um, and that's been throwing me off. I've noticed I, I need to get a little bit better about just... Uh, Having a sturdy, uh, a sturdy uh, position on my lap for for that arcade stick and kind of keeping it in place. And hey, I actually won the game! Yay! <laughs> uh, switching to character select here. Oh yeah, this this is some fun stuff. This is uh, Warashia, or as I like to call him, uh, Castlevania guy. Uh, <laughs> just I mean, look at him. He looks he looks right out of Castlevania. He'd be right at home and uh, like Aria of Sorrow or something, but. Yeah, uh, another interesting character who can throw out those fireballs that kind of kind of look a little goofy. I, I like this game's magical effects and uh, th just this game's look in general. Uh, I I love the effects of the slashes and, and the hit sparks and stuff like that, um, and the magic uh, along with the uh, really beautifully done pixel art of the background and the characters. And I kind of like how incongruous they look. Like look at that fire. And uh, just like that burst effect and stuff like that, uh, it, it really pops in a way that uh, might be jarring at first, but I, I think actually it, it works really well for, for what the game is going for and uh, makes it more flashy than otherwise it would be if maybe it, it blended in a, a bit more uh, art style wise. Yeah, I just really love how this game looks. Ooh, there we go. Was able to wake up and do the crouch. I think that was a crouching B I did there. I'm trying to, uh, there, I know I've done it earlier, but I'm trying to find a point in one of these matches where I get a raw air grab, because that's actually another thing uh, that I learned doing these games. Ah, see, also sometimes, uh, what, what you saw there is I, I managed to get the crouching C to hit that time, but if they're too close to the ground, they'll just fall anyways. Like I said, the timing on that link from the end of the Rekka to that uh, crouching C to get that combo to work is, uh, is very rough, but... Luckily, my 
horrible execution is somewhat counterbalanced by the fact that uh, Ryogi hits like a truck. So <laughs> uh, the, the high damage output actually is, is a, a very good benefit of playing this character. Uh, do I get the combo this time? Yeah! There we go. Pop, pop back up. Air grab. We did it. We did it. She got me in the corner again, though. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Managed to get the double counter in the air. That looked cool. Ooh, yeah. I need to use that overhead kick more. I There are a few times like that where I have strokes of genius and I actually manage to put it to good use, but um, most of the time I just end up not really using it all that well. It's also, it's it's a little slow, but I mean, obviously it's an overhead, so it has to kind of be by design. Interrupting those fireballs. That's something, I, actually, I feel like Ryogi is pretty is pretty good. Uh, her, her, normal, her normals are fast and uh, have long enough reach that uh, she's actually really good at interrupting uh, characters that can be interrupted for uh, out of certain moves and stuff. I remember I was streaming this game with uh, Mark and Jake, and uh, Jake was complimenting how uh, I was doing really good at the start with uh, interrupting him out of Satsuki's bullshit. Just because her mix-up game is uh, is ridiculous. Ah, that, that giant lunging cape pincer thing is just so scary. What a ridiculous normal. Oh, Arashia, you're so funny. I need to stop also using that uh, that backwards, uh, I, I want to say that's called like the butterfly leap or, or something, I can't remember what that's actually called. Again, fucking up the combo, ah, I need to practice more. Um, oh, there we go, so raw air, ta uh, raw air grab, rather, not tag. And do I get the super, hell yeah, two super one combo, great stuff. Um, no, but as I was saying, uh, raw air throws in this game are interesting because they'll always have that yellow effect on them and then result in a ground bounce that um, the damage scaling on it is atrocious, but uh, I, I really love how this game handles uh, air throws, uh, especially the, the, the idea that if you get the raw air throw, uh, you get a free combo conversion off of it. Uh, it just looks so cool, and I remember that being one thing where I, I really felt like I was starting to learn the game. Also, that Warashia's win pose is very funny. I love that. Um, no, I, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, but yeah, I remember... Because there had been that massive session where I lost with Mark, uh, and then I, I had learned a bit of stuff, and I, I remember that thing about the air throws, and I, I remember incorporating a lot of air throws into the next few matches we had played together, and I realized, like, oh shit, like, I, I'm making this work, I'm actually finding good opportune times when we're both in the air together to go for a throw, or one to even not go for a throw th sometimes. Uh, and it was just really cool seeing, like, even that little bit of research and practice I had done in training mode, uh, like, even just putting in the bare minimum, uh, the, the progress I had made the next time Mark and I had played together, and, um, yeah, uh, it was just, you know, th these games are, it's so much fun just to realize, like, oh, I'm doing something really silly, uh, playing through, uh, or how I'm playing this game, and then you actually start to make, uh, adaptations and you, you kind of change your thinking or your approach to certain situation and matches and uh, you start to take the game's mechanics uh, more to heart and you figure out the way the game wants you to play and just just seeing that uh, that growth and uh, that mature inside of you while you play these games is, is a lot of fun see like right right there I was like I'm gonna go for the unblockable and it paid off good stuff I think I'm gonna try am I gonna try going for the the last arc uh, one thing that uh, sometimes characters can do, depending on their style, is if they get a uh, frame-perfect uh, parry while in the uh, heat or blood heat mode, uh, you get a last arc, which is a um, super that does a shit ton of damage. Ryogi's in particular does a massive amount of damage if you get the uh, perfect parry. So There's actually been a few matches where uh, I barely got that many hits in. Um, and I was doing terribly, but then I managed to get into Blood Heat and use Ryogi's uh, last arc and uh, just completely cheese my way to a victory. Fun stuff. I actually don't know if I, if I get any last arcs uh, in this 
footage in particular. I know in that, uh, you know, you know what? I'll actually uh, link to that stream I did with uh, Jake and Mark actually too, uh, in the description if you want to see more Melty Blood gameplay. I know I got a few last arcs in, in uh, that session. This uh, this gameplay footage was actually from before that stream. This this footage is from all the way back in uh, March 20, 29th is when this footage was recorded. I'm, I know I'm really bad at getting these videos up. I, I really should have got this up months back, but you know, kind of like I said, the uh, my priorities kind of shifted and uh, my motivation for the genre kind of dwindled for a little bit there, but I'm back in. Uh, and uh, I want to definitely go back to playing this game. Just, ah, just watching this footage is so much fun. I really... I just love this game. It's a great time. Even when I'm stuck in the corner like this and eating shit. <laughs> yeah, that was great. You, you can kind of see what I was talking about earlier, though, with the uh, the the uh, normals that kind of uh, just chain right back into each other. Uh, she used, like, I, I want to say, like, three, like, crouching A's there, I think that was. Okay, there we go. Got the knife throw. Tried to go for the slide into the Eureka Super there. But, uh, unfortunately, it did not land. Mistake on my part. There we go. I was able to salvage that. Oh, perfect. Okay. I don't know why I said salvage. I was actually doing really good that round. <laughs> I saw myself drop a combo, and I was like, oh, no, I'm doing terrible. But, no, I, I actually did pretty good. Got the perfect. That was cool. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be it for now. Thank you all for watching 36 minutes of Melty Blood Nonsense. It was a great time. And, once again, thank you, Idia, for the matches. Really fun, and uh, just had a great time. So, thanks everyone.